Hi, I'm Rob Millard. I've cut mortises by hand with a chisel and mallet. I've also used the plunge router and the drill press mounted mortising attachment. And of the three, I prefer the drill press. Mortising by hand is satisfying, but it takes quite a bit of skill and is slow. Uh, mortising with the plunge router takes away the skill component and goes very fast, but at the expense of generating a lot of dust and noise. Plus, it leaves a rounded mortise that you either have to modify your tenons or you have to stop and square up the mortises. The drill press, on the other hand, produces a mortise that's ready to go. It's automatically squared up. And it does it uh, pretty quickly and uh, doesn't generate a lot of noise or dust in the process. But as it comes from the factory, or at least mine anyways, it needed some work on it to get it to operate at peak efficiency. There's also some setup techniques and there's a few add-ons that you can make that makes the process that much easier. So let's take a look at those. Here is a mortise that was cut before alterations were made to the drill bit. And you'll note the scallops here along this one side of the wall of the mortise. And I'm guessing that that's robbing some 10-15% of the available glue surface with a corresponding reduction in overall strength. So by making modifications to the drill bit to eliminate that, you're going to increase the strength and the, potentially the longevity of your joints. Not surprisingly, at the heart of the attachment is the drill bit and the mortising chisel, and both of those can benefit from a little attention. As it comes from the factory, the uh, smaller size drill bit, this is a quarter inch uh, drill here, was pretty well formed. Some of the larger ones had quite a few mill marks on them. So I took a, a, a fine uh, half round file and got in there and cleaned up the uh, flutes on the auger. And then taking some fine sandpaper, I think this is 320 grit sandpaper, try to creatively fold it and go in a shoe shine fashion working those flutes down and get those polished up. And it, you don't have to get them perfectly smooth, but the smoother they are, the more easily the chips will be ejected from the cut because the, uh, the real nemesis of these mortising attachments is the heat. And if the chips can't flow out, then the heat's gonna build up because the chips are in effect carrying away the heat. So anything you can do to make that uh, exit of those chips more efficient is going to result in a much better mortise and it's also going to result in a more pleasant experience. The test mortise with the drill as it came from the factory revealed that there was a mismatch between the size of this drill bit and the size of the mortising chisel. The drill bit was slightly too large and it was causing some scalloping. So I took the drill bit to the grinder and just put it up against the wheel and rotated it taking some metal off the outside of that spur area not much, because if you undersize it too much, then too much of the uh, effort will be directed onto this mortising chisel and it will overheat and fail. So there has to be a close relationship to the size of the drill bit and the size of the mortise. But in this case, the drill bit was just slightly too large. And uh, I expected to have to repeat that process since I was very conservative with how much I took off, but I actually got it right on the first try which was simply luck. I took the drill bit to the buffer and on a cotton wheel charged with some buffing compound, I polished it to a mirror-like finish. Didn't take long, probably less than a minute of actual buffing time, but that'll help those chips flow out of there nice and freely. And I have to uh, sharpen the drill bit. And on this a quarter inch one, it's so small, it's hard to see even in person, let alone on the camera. But the areas to concentrate on are the spur, the point, and the cutting lip there. So let's attack the cutting lip first. We don't want to take much metal off, just enough to get it sharp. And of course these drill bits are expendable. Eventually it will wear out, and especially in the smaller size, there's very little metal here to file on and sharpen. The next is the point of the drill bit. And if it's not sharp, the point, when it plunges into the work, it will tend to want to go in a, a off, off orbit, you might say and that results in inaccuracies in the mortise. So it needs to be sharp. And just look at the factory angles and kind of clean that up. It's a three-sided uh, pyramid. And the one is kind of connected to the cutting lip, but it's got a little bit different angle, so get in there. And then the last is the uh, cutting spur on the outside. 
In a similar vein, the inside of the mortise chisel has to be polished. As it comes from the factory, there are considerable mill marks up in there. And none of them were of a nature that I'd have to do any kind of filing, but a little bit of uh, sanding was in order. So I found a drill bit that when I wrapped sandpaper around it was a, an appropriate fit. And it's just a matter of going in there and back and forth to clean that up. You don't have to remove a lot of metal. In fact, I don't think you'd want to remove too much metal because they're probably mated in such a way that if you did take some metal out of the inside, chips might not flow out but get jammed up around the flutes of the auger. So this is just strictly a polishing operation. Of course, the chisel has to be sharp, and to do that you need a cone-shaped sharpening stone. This one comes from Dremel. And as it came from Dremel, the angle was such that it was a steeper than what the grind was on the end of the chisel. So I needed to modify that to have them match more closely. If anything, you want it uh, with a sharper angle than what's in the uh, end of the chisel. So I did that with a uh, uh, diamond uh, dressing wheel and just, just change that shape a little bit there. And to sharpen it, uh, you put it in the end and get one of the points facing right up towards you and raise up on the end of the chisel until it just rubs right there on that point of that uh, chisel bit and turn the drill on. And this isn't a, like a gross material removal, it's just refining a little bit and getting it sharp. And then just continue that for all four of the points of the chisel. Now there has to be some work done on the outside face of the chisel. And as it came from the factory, it was pretty smooth. Uh, this quarter inch one was. A couple of the other ones had uh, considerable mill marks on them. And the smoother the outside face is, obviously the easier it's going to plunge in. But you want to make sure that you don't taper the uh, chisel so that it's wider at the top than it is at the bottom because that'll have like a wedging action. So you want to be uh, err on the side of caution in removing that material. On the ones that had more mill marks I used a coarse and fine India stone to start the process. On this one that's not too bad I'm just going to use uh, some 800 grit wet and dry paper and this is the same setup that I use for sharpening my chisels so this is a piece of plate glass and just go back and forth here and polish it just to get rid of the mill marks. That will also remove any burr that was raised from uh, using that cone for the sharpening. So you want to do this in a very limited way at every sharpening, but you don't have to get carried away with it. At this, for this process here right now, actually lapping it and getting it clean, you need to do a little bit more. And just go around. If there's a few mill marks left, that's fine. You just want a, a smooth, polished surface there that will uh, go through the wood with a minimum of effort. I'm not entirely convinced that the next step is a necessity. At one point, some 17 years ago, when I first purchased the mortising attachment, I was absolutely convinced this was necessary. And that is applying some kind of a dry film lubricant to help those chips eject. But now I'm convinced that uh, the polishing is far more effective at removing the chips than any kind of lubrication. But I still continue to do it because it doesn't hurt. And I think it does, does help a little. Uh, it says that it's a, a good for temperatures of up to 500 degrees for extended periods of time. And judging by some mortising chisels and bits that I've seen, they could indeed reach that kind of a temperature. Now, I'm a little bit paranoid when it comes to introducing lubricants into the shop for fear that they will somehow interfere with finishing or compromise the strength of a glue joint by leaving some residue behind. So I will apply this to the uh, chisel and to the drill bit and then make a couple test cuts and some scrap wood to eliminate any possibility of contamination. The fixture is mostly mounted in the drill press and now I can talk about those two add-ons that I alluded to earlier. The first is this contraption you see here. It's two blocks of wood and there's a V-cut in them you know, that fit around the column. You can't see that from the camera angle. 
Another thing you can't see is back here is a strap hinge that holds them together. And then at the front, there's a through bolt with a knob to tighten it down so that you can move it around where you need it to be. And then there's a conduit clamp, a one inch 45 degree conduit elbow, and then a short section of conduit coming out of there. And obviously this is to extract the dust as it's being ejected from the mortising chisel. And this makes life so much simpler. Uh, it, before, when I would, uh, didn't have this, you would always have this pile of chips and it would be hard to see where you needed to go with your next cut. And when you would uh, clamp and unclamp the work, you would have debris fall down in there that you'd have to get out of the way. This just makes it a much more pleasant experience. The other add-on is this very modest auxiliary table for the drill press. I made it out of two pieces of MDF and it's got some T-Track in it. Or actually melamine, not MDF. It's got some T-Track in it that uh, for our purposes we're interested in these two here. They were spaced to fit this very inexpensive, I think I paid $14.99 for this at Lowe's, drill press vise. But this is far superior to the vise or the hold down and clamping system that came with the mortising attachment. The hold down foot, which keeps the work from being pulled out with the chisel, because there is considerable upforce when you withdraw the chisel from the mortise, uh, that worked well enough. But the fence, and especially they had these little J hooks that were supposed to come out and come back around and hold the work to the fence. That was a joke. They, they did nothing of the sort and they were uh, totally inadequate for the purpose. This here is uh, quick acting, uh, clamps with more than enough force and provides the repeatability so you get a true mortise. Now as far as setup is concerned, I've already got the yoke here in the, uh, in the drill press. This chisel has a shoulder on it that goes up against the bottom of that yoke and there has to be a space there. So you, it's kind of a two-step process for setting this up. Uh, put it in and then I've just picked this ruler here which I measured at 40 thousandths of an inch thick and I put that in between there and tighten up the, uh, the, the set screw. Then push the drill bit up in there and tighten it down. and then withdraw that ruler and push the drill or the mortising chisel all the way up. And what that does is that provides the necessary clearance for the chips to go through. If you don't have that clearance, you'll uh, have a very hard time mortising. It'll overheat because there's nowhere for the chips to go. If you extend it too far, I'm thinking that there'll be, I don't really know this for sure, but I think there's a twofold problem. One, the bit is kind of tapered at its end, so it helps center it in this chisel here and that. So if you had it too far out, you would get a lot of run out. If you, uh, also if you have it too far out, I think that you would be putting too much pressure on these uh, points here of the mortising chisel because they would not be um, advancing with the drill bit at the same rate. And I, I don't know that that's true, but I think that's the, the case. Then the work here, I've scribed a line with the mortising uh, gauge just like I would if I was doing this by hand. And let's set that up on its proper place. And before you make any adjustment as far as positioning, you have to make sure that your table is securely uh, tightened down because if the table moves even a little bit, all your accuracy is gone. So that has to be uh, secured. And mine doesn't tighten down really well. So I have to kind of keep in the back of my mind not to bump into the table while I'm working because it could move it. I wish there was a way to more securely fasten that table. Then it's, it's important that the drill bit be square to the direction of travel. If it's off like this or like this, you'll get a series of steps in the mortise walls which will uh, rob you of a lot of glue strength. So it's important that that be square. So I'm going to take and push this down and lock the quill down. And I never remember which way the quill goes to lock it down. And I just picked the wrong way. So if I would pick the way that I don't think is right, I would probably get it right once. I'm gonna lock the quill down here. Gotta move this out of my way a little bit and get that square in there and square this up. You want it to be perfect. And I don't think that is perfect, let me see. No, I think I need to go that way. There we go. Now I can unlock the quill. 
and position this back here where it belongs. I'm going to raise it up just a little bit. And I think I can go turn the dust collector or shop back on and make a mortise. Now you'll notice uh, uh, two things, or well, I should say, well, you might notice one thing and one thing I neglected to say. Unless the depth is absolutely critical, like if you would have intersecting mortises or if it was going to almost uh, penetrate through a piece, I don't bother with a, a, st a positive stop. I just draw a magic marker line on the chisel at the depth that I want it to go to. And you'll notice that when I was going in, I, I let it kind of find its center because there is a little bit of play in this thing. You can see it move back and forth and you'll see a little bit of wobble. So you want that wobble to disappear and then plunge in. And you need to keep it going at a, a good rate. If you don't go plunge in fast enough, you're gonna build up heat. If you plunge in too fast, you're gonna build up heat. And when I first got this uh, dust collecting attachment here, uh, I had a hard time getting used to it because I was used to watching the chips come out and gauging the progress and of course, you don't see most of the chips because they're automatically sucked up. So it took a, took a little bit of getting used to with that. The other thing that I have read that I do not do is it's recommended to plunge in, then move over a little bit more than, a little bit less than the width of the chisel and plunge it again and so on and so on until you get to the end of your mortise, then go back and clean up those places in between. And the theory is, I guess, that the chisel is supported on all four sides and all, all four lips are cutting. Well, what happens with that is, is that when it does do that little bit of run out as it enters the wood, uh, you can get a mortise that goes boom, 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 like that. Where by moving it over about three quarters of the width of the bit, in this case about three sixteenths of an inch, that chisel is guided ever so slightly by the preceding uh, plunge in, into the wood and so you get a much truer mortise that way. Now it does, obviously you're having uh, these two spurs here on the chisel do all the work, the other two are just along for the ride, but the uh, mortise coming out uh, truer is more important than that. And I think that is all the salient points of this. A lot of times I will go back and plunge the chisel back in again, working my way back that way to excavate this waste out because it can be fairly tightly packed in there. And also, you'll notice that I have the ejection port for the um, mortising chisel facing that way so that the chips are ejected into an already cut area of the mortise. That helps a lot with uh, keeping things cool. If you, you'll see a lot of times that people have the ejection port facing towards you. Well, that means that if you plunge really deep, the chips are having to ride the entire way up before they come out. This way, they're able to kind of get out throughout the plunge, at least after the first cut, anyways. This is looking at the finished mortise, and you'll note the marked improvement over the mortise that was formed with the chisel as it came from the factory and that's going to result in a corresponding rise in strength of this joint with those smooth, clean sidewalls there. I hope that you learned something in this video and that you can incorporate it into your shop. I want to thank you for watching.